is Tokyo, Japan, as it looked from my hotel window. A city of six and one quarter million. The last outpost of democracy in the Far East. To watch the people going about their business here on the Ginza, it was hard to realize that a war was raging in Korea, only 600 short air miles away. But even here, death was on the march. And it was headed straight for me. Showing up yet, huh? Not yet. I don't understand why he wanted all three of us to meet him. That is a question only he can answer. Well, we haven't long to wait. He's said to be here by 12. There's less than a minute to go. What was behind that suitcase with its death-dealing contents? For me, it started two weeks ago at Tokyo's Haneda Airport. As we say in Army intelligence, I was reporting on a spot job. So far, the commies in Japan had given us little trouble. The G2 had just uncovered information they were getting ready to bust things wide open. And what they could do to our supply lines to the Korean front had headquarters plenty worried. Our boys were going through enough hell, even with everything we could send them. And there were too many coming back this way already. Or not coming back at all. Your friend has many sized feet. You know how changeable women are. Your name, please. Jim Carter. I'm a writer for the National Weekly Indicator. Also, you will come with me, Mr. Carter. To anybody watching, it looked like I was in a jam, which was just what we wanted. Uh, National Weekly Indicator, no, Carter. Ah, so. I found out why I'd been picked for this spot job when Colonel Groves handed me a picture of a communist rally. The leader of the group, Taro Mitsudo, had been my roommate back in college. It was quite a surprise, because his father was one of Japan's most prominent cabinet ministers. According to Sergeant Yamamoto of CIC, Taro hung out in a kami rat's nest down by the Shimbashi Canal, and the plan was for me to bump into him accidentally renew our old friendship and try to learn who was the number one comrade in Japan. If I could do that, we'd bust things wide open before they did. If. Inasmuch as I was posing as a correspondent, reservations had been made for me here. And while I was talking to Colonel Groves, my luggage had been sent ahead.
always had a most wonderful dream. I thought I was the one who was dreaming. I'm Steffi Novak. I'm Jim Carter. I know. I saw your name on the register. I've been waiting for you. Somebody should have told me. I didn't realize these rooms were so well furnished. Oh, you're American. Always making jokes. We do that to cover confusion. You'll pardon my curiosity, but uh, don't you find it a bit risky taking naps in strange rooms? Risky? What could happen to me? Somebody might steal your shoes. Well, if somebody wants my shoes, I will give them to them. Now, shall we talk business? What kind of business? You write for the National Weekly Indicator, no? Yes. But how did you find out? There are some letters in your suitcase. Oh, of course. How stupid of me. You are here to make the survey, no? Go ahead, I have no secrets. Well, in Japan you are what you say, the babes in the woods. And Steffi can be very useful. So we shall make the survey together. Sounds chummy. You will wish to meet many people, go to many places. Steffi can arrange it. She knows everything. She knows how to get nylons anyway. That smells like Russian. That building is where the Russian staff members live. Right next door, huh? He's very angry because there was a fly in his borscht. Capitalist fly, no doubt. So you speak Russian? Uh-huh. And French, Spanish, Chinese, and Japanese. And I write shorthand and operate a typewriter. You're quite a talented young lady. Now that's what Steffi has been telling you. How come you don't get yourself a good job instead of working the tourist trade? Those who are citizens of some country get the first choice at what you call the good jobs. And I have no country anymore. But Steffi is not complaining. She would rather work for many people than just one. And Americans pay more money. When do we start? I haven't said I'd hire you yet. But you will. Yeah, I guess you're right. The first thing you can do is show me some nightlife. Steffi's specialty is nightlife. Okay. Leave your phone number and address and... You will find one of my cards in each of your pockets. You don't overlook a bet, do you? Bets which are overlooked do not pay off. I'll remember that. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, it was a pleasure. Thanks for putting my stuff away. Oh, that is a service for which I will not charge you. Goodbye. this look like a sightseeing tour, but you know the place I want to see.
Scotch and sodas. Huh? High Wolf Scotch. High Wolf Scotch? What do you want here? They do not have Scotch and soda. Excuse, please. You can get that at the bar down the street. Oh, that's all right. It doesn't make any difference. Give us whatever you got. The bar down the street is much better. Trying to get rid of us, huh? Okay, we'll go after one drink. Oh, so. This place is off limits to occupation personnel, sir. Yes, I know. I saw the sign outside. May I see your identification, please, sir? Okay, Mr. Carter, but if you'll take a tip from me, you'll get out of this joint. It smells for more reasons than one. Thanks. He's right, Jimmy. Let's go. In a minute. Let's have some more of that singing. You know this one? As tech men, we will ever sing in fair or stormy weather. No matter what the years may bring, we'll always stand together. College friends remain through life, sharing joys and sorrows too. Helping hands in peace or strife, such is the pledge of old tech you. Rock, rock, tech, tech, rock, rock. Many other people. You have made a mistake. Oh, no, I haven't. I know that. On a second thought, maybe you're right. Must have been a couple of other guys. to make sure we didn't lose the taxpayers, sir. <laughs> Thanks. Just help yourself. Thanks. Hey, your maid just slipped me a cold towel. What should I do with it? It is a Japanese custom to wipe your after you have been out. Very refreshing. Oh. Nice custom. Nice maid, too. Well, another custom? In Japan, comfort comes first. I haven't got a spare come on, have you? <laughs> I was just thinking, Jimmy. You said you thought that man in the bar was somebody you knew. I'm sure he was. Maybe if you tell Steffi more about him, she can find out for you. No, thanks. It's not that important. You were so excited. I thought it was very important. Well, wouldn't you be excited if you thought you saw an old friend in a foreign country? Maybe. Pretty girl. Who is she? My sister Christine. Now, this picture doesn't do her justice. She's very beautiful. 
in North Korea, huh? How did you know? The photographer's name and address is right on the back. You are very observing. Yes, she's in North Korea, but she will be with me soon. Yeah? How's she going to get out? Please, Jimmy, you have kept Steffi up very late and she's getting sleepy. Maybe another pair of nylons would wake you up. Oh, these are still like new and I can only wear one pair at a time. Good night, Jimmy. about Steffi Novak, Joe. Steffi Novak? Oh, very smart girl. I get the feeling she's a little too smart. Any police record? No, no police record. Suspect how black market, but never catch her. Well, there's a picture of a girl on the living room table. Photographer's address is in the folder. Get a snapshot of it and give it to Colonel Groves. Pseudo. Oh, Jim, come. We will talk in the open. Even the world of the diet building might have ears. Have you talked to my son yet? No, I saw him, but apparently he wanted no part of me. That shows how he has changed. But I can understand it, for I watched the change take place. Not only toward you, but toward me and everything else that was once important to him. You see, Taro was trained to be a kamikaze pilot. Day after day, hour after hour, he sat in a classroom studying just one subject, how to die. Not how to die in the manner expected of a soldier, but how to commit suicide. <laughs> In planes loaded with high explosives, they were trained to hurl themselves into a bell with only one thought in mind to reach their objective. That their own lives would be forfeited was unimportant, for they were taught that self-destruction was the only real glory. Hey, 
やっちまう貴様は俺の言うことを聞き取ってるか貴様はそんなことに合コンができんぞバッもう一回やってみよろしい、お前たち席に帰っていい。It was a fantastic training, but deadly sorrow. Nothing was overlooked which would play on their emotion and obtain the desired result. Student graduates, he is given a diploma. When a kamikaze student graduates, he is given funeral rites, which enshrine him as a Japanese god. Fingernail clippings and locks of hair were placed in the envelopes as symbolic remains of the living dead, and they drank a portion of sacred wine to give them immortality. After that, they were ready for their first mission and their last. Umeto. But Taro found it unnecessary to complete the rites. Japan had surrendered. Taro never came home after that day, and I had no idea where he was. Until I saw his picture in the paper, I have told you this, so you will not judge him too severely, Jim. Yes, I know. Whew. Is it hot? I could sure go for one of those cold towels you made dishes, huh? You would find one on that tray. Well, that's what I call service. Why are you coming with the dictation? It is almost finished. I didn't think I gave you so much. Steffi has added a few touches of her own, so your magazine will think that you are working very hard. If you get a raise, Steffi will divide it with you. And what if I get fired? Then Steffi will get a new boss. Nothing could be fairer than that. Oh, there is a telegram for you on a dresser. Yeah? What does it say? It is sealed and I didn't open it. Couldn't you see through the envelope? No, the paper is too thick. When did this come? About half an hour ago. You are going out again so soon? Yeah, for a little while. Do you want Steffi to go with you? No, I can handle this myself. Oh, uh, Jimmy. What was that for? Steffi needs a new pair of nylons. And she cannot find where you have hidden them. Haven't you heard? Heard what? The price of nylons has gone up.
島。江ノ島。神田。
that it would be most unlucky for you to attempt to cry for help. So you will speak softly, please. You win by two points. Where did you go today, Mr. Carter? I took you in that shin to get an Oshima. Why? I wanted to see what it was all about. You lie! If you know I'm lying, you must know the truth. We won't hear it from you, Mr. Carter. I went to see a fellow I ran across at the bar the other night. I used to go to college with him. He sent me a note to meet him at the festival. Why? So he could tell me to stay away from him, in case I had any idea of looking him up. Fortunately for you, Mr. Carter, your words have been truthful. If you are wise, you will stay away from him, as he requested. Please accept my apologies for this intrusion. <laughs> How do you feel, Jimmy? At least I can still feel that's something. Where did you come from? The desk clerk said you were in, but you didn't answer the phone, so I came to see why. I arrived just after Jeffrey found you. Jeffrey? Sure thing, old boy. Heard you moaning, roused my curiosity, so I got the room clerk to let me in. There you were, stretched on the floor with that chair on top of you, and a couple of bumps on your bean. You switch on the lights before you go prancing around the room, old boy. Broke my toe once doing the same thing. Taught me a lesson. Well, nothing more I can do, so I'll toddle along. Steffi look after you. Competent female, Steffi. Cheer. By the looks of things, they got into my room from that building next door. Did you see anything about them you would recognize again? No, sir. With that flashlight in my face, I was as blind as a bat. What impression did you get from your talk with Taro? He was colder than a tax assessor. There was just one time when I got a spark, and that's when I mentioned a girl he was going to marry before he went haywire. Yes, Mr. Matsudo brought in some pictures of her this morning. We're making a check on her. Uh, what do you know about a man named Oyama, who runs an import and export company? Oyama? He's a big businessman. Made a lot of money during the war and is still doing all right. Well, Steffi Novak has made arrangements for me to meet him in connection with my survey. He's giving a party to Tommy and I've been invited. It may be legitimate. Then on the other hand, I'll get in touch with you when I return. Goodbye, sir. Nice-looking hotel. What's the name of it? Atami Onoya. It's the best in town. Atami is a celebrated place for its hot springs. Also for honeymoons and romance. It's too bad I'm here on business. Your business doesn't start till dark. Oh, excuse me, please. My business starts right now. that we have such excellent entertainment tonight. Ichimaru is the number one geisha of Japan. Is that so?
So you leave the party. Who called you? He said it was Inspector Tabucci. Told me to report to my office right away. It's a trick to expose you. When you return to the party, be careful what you say. There will be poisoned food for the wrong answer. Not to eat would also prove fatal. The 
the telephone service in Japan has much room for improvement. I must apologize for the operator disturbing you. Oh, it wasn't the operator's fault. No? No, they just got me mixed up with somebody else. Whom do you mean by they? Pardon? I said, uh, whom do you mean by they? They? Oh, the Tokyo police, uh, Inspector Tabuchi or something like that. I know Inspector Tabuchi quite well. Uh, did he say who he thought you were? Yeah, an intelligence officer. He said to call my office right away and then hung up before I could put him straight. That is odd. Inspector Tabuchi is a very careful man. I do not see how he could make such a careless mistake. Anybody can make a mistake once in a while. That's why they put erasers on lead pencils. Oh, you've even got one on yours. <laughs> That's very amusing. Hi. No, thanks. Boy, you must have some beans. The sauce is excellent. Have any more such incidents happened since you have been in Tokyo? As a matter of fact, yes. There's something going on I don't understand, and I seem to be right in the middle of it. Sounds interesting. I enjoy a good mystery. Go on, Mr. Carter. Well, the other night I ran across a fellow I went to college with. But instead of the glad hand, he gave me the cold shoulder. Cold shoulder? The brush off, the antisocial business. And back in my room, I was hit over the head and given the third degree. Light in my eyes, knives at my throat, the full treatment. You do seem to be in the middle. And did you report it to the authorities? Yes, but they're as much in the dark as I am. Somebody's got me mixed up with somebody else, and frankly, Mr. O.E.M., I'm worried. I can understand your concern. But perhaps tonight will be the end of it. I hope it's a happy ending. Come, we'll drink to that. Oh, excuse, please. Your sake has grown cold. Sit down, think that's it. Yeah, I know. Kuchana. To the end of your troubles, Mr. Carter. Yeah. Weekly indicator. Yes, I completed that article. I'll see you in the morning and discuss it with you. Goodbye. Carter, I was just slipping a letter underneath your door in the box of my mail by mistake. Thanks. That's all right, old boy.
Don't have me go. Remember me? Jim! Jim Carter! I can believe it's really you. It's me, all right. Mr. Massadour said you uh, kept in touch with him for a while and then stopped. I told him you must be married. No. I'm not married. Well, I'll bet you're engaged anyhow. Who's the lucky fellow? Praise Jim. Still carrying the torch for Taro, huh? No. I hate him. I hate him. You know, I've got a hunch he feels the same way about you. You have seen him? Where's he, Jim? Take me to him. It's not quite that simple. He's mixed up with some pretty bad company. I was afraid that would happen. He was so... so confused when the war ended. He's like a man walking in his sleep, Namiko. He can't see what's going on around him. But I think you and I can wake him up. Oh, Jim, I'll do anything. Might be a little risky. You might have to take a chance. I'm not afraid. Good girl. Watch her. Don't let anything happen to her. about Jim Carter's. They said they're the police. The police? That's what they said, Taro. So you are responsible for Namiko being here. I told you there's no place in my life for her. You know better than that or you wouldn't have come. You tricked me into coming, both of you. There's no trick about her injuries, Taro, or how she got them. The police wouldn't do this to Namiko to find out about me. It is typical of police methods to commit violence and blame it on others. Sure, sure. If you listen to that bunch you're in with, it's always law and order that starts trouble. No matter what the incident, it's the same old tune. Even to what's going on in Korea. Please, Tao. You think we are blind, but it is you who cannot see. In the old Japan, did a farmer ever own his land? Could the worker demand fair treatment? Was the voice of the lowest as strong as that of the highest? 
Those things are good, Taro. Why would you destroy them? Your father has invited me to his home until I'm well again. Come with me, Taro. report on the Korean situation. Been over there a couple of days. Couldn't see much there and then blasted rain. I was fired at, you know. Frightened me out of my wits. In fact, I'm still in a panic. Timmy! About time you showed up. How long have you been waiting? Too long. How do you like Steffi? She has been shopping today. She did all right for herself. How do you like the new bracelet? That's a coincidence. I brought you some myself. You did? Yep. Oh, Jimmy, how nice. Let me see them. Close your eyes. Those are not as nice as yours, but they're the best I could do. Jimmy's making a joke like a policeman just to tease Steffi, no? No. Jimmy's paying Steffi off for the work she's done. It took me a little time to figure out what you had coming, but... I think these will cover it. You really are a policeman? Yep, I really are. And you would really take Steffi to jail? Just as sure as Steffi would take me to Oyama's party where I was liable to be poisoned. I don't know what you mean. I was just helping with a survey. Yeah, only I was the one to be surveyed. I suppose I should tell you that I'm sorry about this, but I never apologize for my job. You are making a mistake, Jimmy. Steffi made the mistake. And here's another one. This note you put on Jeffrey's mail, telling me where I could find Namiko. Note? I do not know of any note. No? See how the E and the K are a little offline? Well, this was written on your typewriter. There's a sample right below that matches identically. That doesn't mean that I did it. Anybody could use my typewriter just like you did. All right, we keep going. You said that was your sister in North Korea. She is and that you write each other once a week. We do. Are these some of the letters? Yes. Where did you get them? That doesn't matter. They've been examined in their code letters concerning military strength and movements. Code letters? I don't know what you are saying. I say you're using the sister routine as a front to pass military information back and forth. The woman you're writing to looks no more like her than I do. She's been dead for six months. That is a lie. You are only saying that to make me talk. Here's a report that was just received. The full description of her and the way she died. Body found floating in the Imjin River. Sister Act. Take over these and 
I will prove it. How? I will kill Oyama. stand a better chance with this. Goodbye, Jimmy. Why did you give me an empty gun? I had to be sure who you wanted to use it on. I'm sorry about your sister, Steffi, but if you want to settle with Oyama, do it my way. Tell me what to do. First, you tell me everything you know about him. I don't know anything I can prove. He's very clever. What was your job with him? I had to check on people he suspected, like you sometimes carry messages to different cities in Japan. I knew it was wrong, Jimmy, but it was for my sister. I would have killed to get her out of North Korea. I tried everything, begged everyone to help me. But I have no country, and no one could offer any help until I met Oyama. And he promised to help you if you'd help him. Yes, he was kind and sympathetic. I thought at last I had found a friend. I didn't care who he was or what he did. Did he handle these letters for you? I would give him mine and he would give me hers. But it's all so confusing. If she's dead, how could they be in her handwriting? There's nothing new about forgery or treachery either with that outfit. Do you know Taro Mitsudo? I know who he is. Well, he thinks Namiko's kidnapping is a trick of the police. Can you get in touch with him and tell him the truth? I need him on our side, too. I will do it. Okay, and you keep on going just as you were with Oyama. See if you can learn where he keeps his records. We need evidence, Steffi, and when we get it, you will get your revenge. Tarosanni. What brings you here? Something you should know about Namiko. She is not in a hospital because of the police, but because of your own comrades, Senji, Kato, and Oda. Did Jim Carter ask you to tell me that? Yes. It has been suspected that you are more interested in him than your work. And this proves it. The truth is lost when a woman finds love. You are a fool, Taro. And you are a traitor. I have but to raise my hand and you will not live here alive. Go ahead and raise your hand. What happens to me makes no difference now. But it will not change the truth. If you do not believe me, find out for yourself. I found out. Too late. Miss Novak. Oh, good morning. I did not expect to find you here. 
I came to see if there was anything you wished me to do. Your eagerness to cooperate is commendable, but if there were anything, I would have contacted you in the usual manner. Where is my secretary? I brought her a gift of a pair of nylons. She's putting them on. That was a very generous gift, which reminds me I have a gift for you. Another letter from your sister. Thank you. I believe it won't be long now before the two of you are together. Your words are very encouraging. I shall never forget what you have done, Mr. Oyama. I received my greatest pleasure from aiding those in distress. And now, if you'll excuse me. Certainly. The situation in Korea has reached a critical stage. I have just received instructions that something must be done immediately to disrupt the interference coming from here. But we be careful. something that will direct the enemy's attention without its true purpose being suspected. So, we will use that great democratic privilege. The workers' strike. They are planning a general strike of transportation and industry. It is to start in Tokyo and spread throughout Japan. The man who will lead it is your son, Taro. The shame my son has brought on the name of Matsudo is only exceeded by my concern for my country. As my son, his words will carry much weight. You must stop him. He'll be doing nothing illegal. And if we arrest him on some trumped up charge, it'll just make a martyr of him. Then, I shall stop him, myself. この協力する瞬間とも、ストライキだ。ストライキだ。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほら。ほ
you still think the police kidnapped Namiko? so we could see Fujiyama and how suddenly the sun would shine through and there it was. Well, that is the way that clouds are suddenly lifted for me. I see things so different now that I cannot even find a good excuse. I'll never hurt you again. We'll go to my father. all over for you, Taro. Mr. Oyama wishes to see you. He's angry about what happened last night? He's not pleased. Come. But your behavior at the strike meeting last night showed you were unfit to be a member, that you do not have the necessary heart for your work. Or I should say, perhaps you have too much heart. By your traitor's action, you have made us lose faith. It is fitting that your final act should help restore it. See that man down there with the suitcase? That is your suitcase, Taro. What it contains will be very forcefully disclosed at exactly 12 o'clock. Now, if you look down there by that waiting bench, you'll see your father. He has come in response to a note from you. 
Sanji is very clever at imitating handwriting. Ah, there comes Mr. Carter, also in response to a note from you. And he has brought Miss Novak as you requested. There is also another note in your handwriting, a note of confession, that you alone are guilty for what is to happen down there. But it will not be found until tomorrow, when your body is discovered, floating in the palace moat. Now they are together. Undoubtedly surprised and puzzled that you should ask them all to come. Well, they have not long to wait for the answer. Even if you were successful in getting out of here, you could not reach them in time to save them. See? Already the man is leaving the suitcase. In a few seconds, it will be over. And no one will ever suspect the truth. You are right. It is a perfect plan. They will never suspect the truth. simple, isn't it? If you are referring to the explosion, it is as much a mystery to me as it is to you, Mr. Carter. I didn't say it was a mystery to me, but we'll skip that for the moment. But what about this? I tried to stop him from jumping, but he tore away from me. For once, Mr. Oyama, I believe you, at least partly. But I don't think the law will. You see, the evidence indicates you pushed him. That is not true, is it, Sanji? No. It's not me you have to convince, but the law. If you tried to stop him, his torn clothing would have been in your hand instead of yours and his. What is the penalty for murder in Japan, Mr. Oyama? I did not push him. He jumped. Why? Because he... There are many reasons for such an act. Business troubles, mental unbalance, a lost love. Who knows what's in a suicide's mind? I think I know what was in Taro's. And although you can't hear him, I've got a hunch he's laughing at this moment. Do they hang a man for murder in Japan? Or do they use that quaint method of making them kneel and putting a bullet in their head?
I once told you, Mr. Carter, that I always bend with the wind, like the bamboo. There must be quite a breeze coming through that broken window right now. You Americans are stern, but you are just. So I shall throw myself upon your mercy and make a bargain. The truth about everything for my freedom. No! This is not the time to be an idealist, Senji, but a realist. You too must make a bargain. Perhaps you're right. But it is a matter we should first discuss. あんたは今までの秘密を全部暴露してしまうっていうんですかこの場合はもういいんじゃないかあんたは暴露しても罪は軽くはなりませんぞこれも一つの手段だ I'm sorry about Carl. It is better to die honorably than to live dishonorably. Japan is very fortunate, sir, to have a man like you working for her. Goodbye, Steffi. Goodbye, Jimmy. Steffi is going to miss her boss. And Steffi's boss is going to miss her. There was a lot more I wanted to say to Steffi, but it would have to wait. I still had a job to do, and she had some music to face. But I knew I'd be coming back to Tokyo. And I also knew uh, <laughs> what size nylon bring. <laughs>